Still looking, say, please wait. All right, Judges, the 16th chapter. Let's begin at verse 1. Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went in to her. When the Gazites were told Samson has come here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night saying, in the morning, when it is daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gateposts, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Verse 4. Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, entice him and find out where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him that we may bind him to afflict him and every one of us will give you 1100 pieces of silver 
So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. Is that the word? Judges, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 6. I'd like to use for a topic today, sleeping with the enemy. Look at somebody and say, we're going to talk about today sleeping with the enemy. Amen. While you're on your feet, will you pray? Merciful Father, we bless you for an opportunity to share your word with your waiting congregation. God, we thank you now. We don't count it robbery that you have allowed us to be chosen vessels to share your word with your people. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Remove Dakota that your servant might stand, that this word may come forth fresh, that it may come with the anointing, that it may come with the power that only you can give that may allow preaching to be easy. You be glorified, and we continue to give you praise. It's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we ask and believe. Amen and amen. Look at somebody on your way to your seat and say, sleeping with the enemy. Couple of questions. Has God ever given you instructions to follow, but you got off course? Has God ever spoken to you prophetically but you did not immediately do what he told you to do? Has God ever given you goals and dreams, but you let them sit idle? Has God ever given you purpose, but you allowed your personal circumstances to distract you? Has God spoken to you and given you specifics for your life? but you let your flesh detain you. Well, you are not alone. Many of us assembled here today will answer yes to most of these questions. We know where we should be. We know what our assignments are. We know the greater for God in our lives. We know the prophecies that have been fulfilled over us, but many of us walk in a spirit of disobedience. Such is the case with our biblical account of Samson. God had planned a special life for Samson. He would be one to help protect the people of Israel. God visited Samson's parents through an angel and told them that Samson would be a Nazarite from birth. This special vow put restrictions on Samson's life. This included the food that Samson was to eat. This included that he was not to allow a razor to cut his hair. This restricting indicated that he was not to be near a dead body. And in exchange for these limitations, God endowed Samson with exceptional strength. But sadly, just like us, Samson violated all of his restrictions. He got off course. He did not do the assignment immediately that he was called to do. He sat for a while idle, forgetting his purpose. He became distracted with his own circumstances. He let his fleshy desires detain him. Samson, just like many of us, was guilty of sleeping with the enemy. Tell somebody sleeping with the enemy. Now, to sleep, I want to give you some things to put in your notes. To sleep, there are a few things that I want you to just process in your mind as we deal with sleeping. 
But to sleep is a recurring state of mind that is characterized by altered consciousness. So you don't even really know what's going on around you. To sleep inhabits your sensory activities. You are not as attuned to things as you should be. To sleep inhabits voluntary muscle movement. You don't even move how you ought to move. To sleep reduces your interactions with things around you, your surroundings. You're just there and you're not even aware of what's going on around you. To sleep decreases one's ability to be able to react. Tell somebody to sleep. Now, if you are asleep and if there is an enemy presence, you know there's got to be danger. When we look at the enemy, who is this enemy? What is this enemy? I'm glad you asked. The enemy is one to foster harm. The enemy is the one to engage in antagonistic activities against one another, jugging at you, messing with you. See, the enemy is an adversary to what you are to become. God said you will do this, but the enemy wants you to do contrary. The enemy, brothers and sisters, is an opponent. Everybody say an opponent. So if we know what it means to sleep, and if we know what it means to be around an enemy, I have a definition that I have created of what it means to sleep with the enemy. So to sleep with the enemy is to entertain any person, place, or thing that alters your consciousness and causes you to compromise your relationship with Christ, takes you off of your God-given assignment, or disrupts the momentum of your destiny. Tell somebody that's sleeping with the enemy. So you've got to understand, to entertain any person, place, or thing that alters your consciousness, that causes you to compromise your relationship with Christ, takes you off of your God-given assignment or disrupts the momentum of your destiny is sleeping with the enemy. Look at somebody and say, I hope you're not sleeping with the enemy. See, sometimes when we sleep with the enemy, we do it deliberately. Yes, yeah, see, see, we do it deliberately. We have made up in our minds, I like where I am and I'm staying where I am. But Ephesians 4 and 27 reminds us not to give place to the devil. Sometimes we sleep with an enemy because we are caught off guard. But Romans 7, 21 reminds us that when you would do good, evil is always present. So whether we're intentional or unintentional, we must be mindful that problems arise when we sleep with the enemy. In our text in Judges, the 16th chapter, verse 1, Samson went to Gaza after a woman. Everybody say after a woman. After a woman. Say it again. The Gazites knew Samson's purpose, and they wanted to kill him. Samson had no business in Gaza after a prostitute going in to spend time with her. Tell somebody, no business. That's not where God sent him. He was off of assignment. Then he got away from there, took the gates, the posts, and everything, went away from there, and lo and behold, right at verse 4, Samson hadn't had enough. I, side note, tell somebody side note. Side note is when the Holy Spirit drops something in my spirit that's not even in my notes. Side note, if the Lord brought you out of one crazy situation, how far somebody say, don't go in another one? That, that, that's a side note, side note. But look at what happens at verse 4. It says there, Judges the 16th chapter, verse 4, he went down to the valley of Sorek 
after another woman. Tell somebody another woman. This woman is Delilah. She knew who he was. She knew his purpose. And the Philistines wanted to kill him. Samson, brothers and sisters, stayed in a spiritual sleep. And he embraced an intimate sleep with Delilah. In Judges, the 16th chapter, how do I know Samson was asleep? How do I know he was sleeping with the enemy? Well, let's look. Judges, the 16th chapter at verse 6. The first time Delilah got with Samson, she began to inquire about his strength. At the 6th verse, Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies, Samson. You know, I believe she kind of put it on. Tell me why you so strong. You know, that's all a woman got to do. Tell it and a brother loses his head. Tell, y'all understand. But she asked him that, tell me where your great strength lies. Samson said to her, if I bind me with seven fresh bowstrings. Now, a bowstring, brothers and sisters, is a tendon of a dead animal that has not yet been dried. He says, if you bind me with seven bowstrings, not yet dry, then I shall become weak and be like another man. The first thing I need to let you know is Samson wasn't supposed to be there with Delilah and he wasn't supposed to be around in the bowstrings in attendance from an animal. Nevertheless, she asked him, what can I do to bind you, to bound you? And that's what he told him. Verse 8, so the Lord of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings not yet tied, and she tied Samson with them. Verse 9, the men are laying in wait. They think they're about ready to go overtake Samson. And then lo and behold, she said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He broke loose from the bowstrings, and then uh, they looked at him as if to say, that wasn't it. So then a second time, tell somebody a second time. See, when you go back into the same stuff more than one time, tell somebody you're sleeping with the enemy. See, I think it was Maya Angelou that said, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Y'all can write that one down. I didn't quote it. It was Maya Angelou. When they tell you who they are, believe them. Tell somebody believe them. Delilah showed Samson she was crazy. He went back for more. Judges, the 16th chapter at verse 10. This is the second time Delilah said to Samson, Look, you mocked me. You told me a lie. Please tell me how, what I can do to bound you up and take away some of your strength. He goes on to tell her about verse 11. If you get some new ropes that have never been used and tie me up with these new ropes, I'll become weak and I'll be like another man. So once again, she tied him up with the ropes. What did Delilah do? She called the Philistines over to try to kill Samson. The Philistines got there, Samson, boom, broke loose from the ropes. And then the Philistines had to back up because they knew Samson would take them out, right? So then once again, Samson feeling pretty good, like, hey, they didn't get me. But then Delilah comes back the third time. Tell somebody the third time. You know, third time. Judges, the 16th chapter, right there about verse, verse 13. She says, until now, Samson, you have mocked me and you told me lies. Tell me where you may be bound. Now, why would you entertain somebody that's asking you, tell me how I can tie you up and kill you? But once again, he says, if you weave the locks of my head into a web of a loom, of a loom, then and tighten that up that I'll be just like any other man. What did she do? She weaved the locks of his, of his dress probably while he was asleep. Y'all can figure out how he went to sleep. I don't even have to tell you how he laid there all that time with this nut woman. But anyway, 
But anyway, once again, she, he told her what she could do. And once again, she called the Philistines. Samson, the Philistines are upon us. He broke loose with the, broke out of his sleep, grabbed his hair loose and got free again. And then I guess by now she's feeling like, man, he's making a fool out of me. But if you ask me, she's making a fool out of him. Right about now, then Delilah. Delilah at this point, brothers and sisters, poured on the seduction. If you'll go with me down to about verse 15. She says, you say you love me, but your heart is not with me. She's pouring it on. Y'all get it? All you got to do, y'all understand, tell somebody side note. I don't know why the Holy Spirit keep giving me these side notes, but somebody needs this side note. Side note, all somebody has to do is mention love and you will give it all up. That was a side note. Tell somebody, you better watch that word. Because if the truth be told, a whole lot of people don't even know what love is. They are holler out, I love you, so they can get whatever you got to give them. And then they're hollering out, I love you on the other side of town. Then they're hollering out, I love you up in another part of town. Then they're hollering out, I love you down there in South Carolina. They're hollering it out in Georgia. They're not hollering it out up in Virginia. They're just hollering out, I love you, I love you, so they can get what they want. Tell somebody, you better try the spirit by the spirit. That was a side note. Judges, the 16th chapter. He told her all his heart. Why? Because she talked about love. And then he begins to tell her the truth. He says, no razor has ever come on my head. He says, I'm a Nazarite to God. And from my mother's womb, I've been a Nazarite. If I am shaven, the covenant is broken, and my strength will leave me, and I will become weak, just like any of a man. Well, verse 18, y'all know what she did with the information. Delilah realized he told her the truth. She went to the Philistines and she began to talk to them. I know what needs to happen to get his strength. So she went on and called the man to get ready to come and do what he needed to do with Samson. So after she talked with the Philistines, the Bible didn't say it, but if you'll allow me to use my sanctified imagination, I believe she opened up her little apron and she was ready for her payoff. Because y'all know the word said that each one was going to give her 1,100 pieces of silver. So I believe she said, I got the real deal now, pay me my money. I really don't care anything about him anyway. I don't know why he was so weak. I don't know why he kept falling in that trap. Anyway, come get the man and give me my money. Look at somebody and tell him, look at somebody and say, don't be bought for no money. Look at somebody and don't be bought for a chicken dinner. Don't be bought for your rent. Don't be bought for your light bill to get paid. Don't be bought for your children to get some shoe. High five somebody and say, don't be bought. Delilah realized here that the truth was being told. And then I begin to ask myself, what was Samson thinking? I ask myself, God, what was Samson thinking? Why did he toy with? Why did he play and let his guard down? Why did he expose his real weaknesses to Delilah? And the, can I tell y'all what the Holy Spirit said? The Holy Spirit said, McCullough, don't look at Samson so hard. Because if the truth be told, you do the same thing too. I said, oh no, I don't. God. You know, I'm sitting there battling well. Oh no. He said, oh yes, you do. And you're not alone. I said, God, you got to show me. Can I tell you what he showed me? He said, Samson's not the only one that allows himself to get weaknesses delivered to the enemy. He said, what can you do? What happens to get your mind twisted? And then the answer came. Start thinking about crazy stuff. Then the Lord said, what can happen to make you show, slow up your prayer life? I said, whoo, get distracted. What is your weakness to make your finances not be where they need to be? I said, whoop, walk through to the mall. 
Why is it that you can't take authority over the spirit of the lust of eating? Whoa. Bring home a milkshake and french fries. The Lord said, why is it that your family time is disrupted? Because there's a TV in every room and we'd rather be on Facebook and TV and all that than quality time together. What is it that can prevent you from obeying God? if the thing seems to be too hard for my flesh. Now y'all might be looking at first lady, but high five somebody and say, me too, me too. See, many of us entertain an enemy spirit. And if we will be true to ourselves, the enemy is out there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to kill your dreams. He wants to kill your spirit. He wants to kill your focus. He wants to kill your ministry. He wants to kill your witness. He wants to kill your goals. He wants to kill your influence. He wants to kill your destiny. He wants to kill your thought. He wants to kill your reputation. He wants to kill your hopes. He wants to kill your emotions. And he will do it if you keep sleeping with it. Look at, us, look at somebody and say, there's a danger with sleeping with the enemy. When we sleep with the enemy, several things happen. Can I show you what happens? Tell somebody, I got to know. I got to I gotta know. Are y'all ready? Jot, jot these few things down. When we sleep with the enemy, the first thing happens is we become bald. Tell somebody, bald. I'm not talking about these brothers with the premature balling and they, they, got, they, they rocking the bald head. You know, the Isaac Hayes look. I ain't talking about that. But we become bald. Look at what happens. Judges, the 16th chapter, verse 19. She made Samson sleep on her knees. Y'all can figure out why Samson is sleeping on her knees. And she called for a man. And she calls him to shave the seven locks of hair off of his head. She shaved him. Remember, he told her his heart. I'm a Nazarite. No razor shall come upon my head. What does she do? She gets somebody to shave his head. She's already told him she's crazy. He's still laying there with her. So now he's getting ready to get what he's getting ready to get. He is bald. Then look at what happened here in this same verse, 19. She began to afflict him, punching him. She began to show out. Y'all see that? She began to afflict him. She began to whoop up on the brother. But his strength had gone from him. And Nazarite is not to shave his head because his hair was a part of the strength and the covenant that God had with him. Samson's hair was now shaved, and therefore the covenant with God was broken. When we toy with the enemy, brothers and sisters, we become spiritually bald. What does that mean? It means that our covenant with God is broken. It means our, our strength has weakened. It means our decisions have become carnal. It means our thinking has become worldly. It means our perspectives are natural rather than spiritual because our covering has been removed. You ever talk to somebody and they come off with this way off stuff and you're trying to figure out where did you get that from? I just decided I'm not arguing with them anymore. They're spiritually bald. Tell somebody spiritually bald. When we sleep with the enemy, the second thing that happens is we become blind. Tell somebody blind. Judges, the 16th chapter, verses 20 and 21. And she said, the Philistines be here upon thee, Samson. He woke up out of his sleep and said, I'll go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. Verse 21, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Do y'all see that in the text? See, Samson thought that he had the same power as before, but he was now spiritually blind. He did not even see that the Lord had departed from him. 
When we sleep with the enemy, many of us might wonder, what is happening in my life? Why are my prayers not getting answered? Why are my dreams not being fulfilled? Why is my ship not coming in? What happened to my motivation? What happened to my joy? What happened to my passion? Could it be, I'm just saying, could it be that the Lord has departed from us? The Philistines poked out Samson's eyes. He did not, did not see the state he was in spiritually. And now he's about to be in a blind state physically. His spiritual blindness has affected now his physical sight. When we are in the blind we lose sight of what God has for us and what God wants for us. I want to just speak over somebody today and say, don't lose sight. Look at somebody and say, don't lose sight. You remember Mark, the eighth chapter, about verse 23, the story of the blind man, that Jesus went to the man that was blind and he wanted his sight. The Bible says that Jesus spit and put spit in his hand and put it on the man's eyes and then went back to ask him, what did he see? And the man said that I see men as trees walking. So Jesus went back and repeated it again, spit in his hand, put his hands on the man's eyes and asked him again, now what do you see? The man says, now I see clearly. I want to decree over you today that many of us need to ask God, God, touch my eyes, touch my spiritual sight so I can see clearly once again. You need to see the vision for your family. You need to see your directions clearly. You need to see instructions clearly. You need to see the mistakes you've made clearly. You need to see everything that pertains to you clearly. Tell somebody, I got to keep my sight. When you sleep with the enemy, there's a third thing that happens. The, what's the first thing, class? You become bald. What's the second one? Anybody in here want to be bald and blind? Okay, good. Third thing that happens when you sleep with the enemy is you become bound. Tell somebody bound. Look at Judges, the 16th chapter, verse 21. After the Philistines have now put Samson's eyes out, it says in verse 21, they brought him down to Gaza and they bound him with fetters of brass and he became a grinder in the prison. And so what we have near, here now is that Samson is in jail. He is in prison. He is bound. God previously instructed Samson to be a conduit to free the Israelites. Samson was supposed to make sure the Israelites were free. But now he has become bound by the very hand of the people he was already destined to defeat. We need to make sure that we are aware, brothers and sisters. God has given you destiny. He has spoken into your life. He has given you purpose. Don't dare allow yourself to get bound and not be able to do what God has called you to do. I wish somebody would just clap and say, I receive that in the name of Jesus. See, when we are bound, we don't help God's agenda. When we are bound, we don't use our gifts as we should. When we are bound, we don't use our talents to advance the kingdom of God. When we are bound, we don't even want to volunteer to do things in the ministry. When we are bound, we can't find ourselves laying before the Lord worshiping. When we are bound, we don't want to participate one bit. When we are bound, we can't find ourselves even getting in the presence of the Lord. When we are bound, we don't want to even hear gospel music. When we are bound, we want to look at mess on TV instead of something that will edify us. When we are bound, the Bible decrees who the Son has set free is free indeed. And many are bound because we are not true to what it is that is entangling us. Many of us lie to ourselves. Y'all, this ain't no shouting word. Y'all figure that out by now, right? Many of us are not true to what it is that entangles us. 
Many of us dismiss what's real. But if we're ever going to be set free, tell somebody, I got to be honest with myself. See, we've got to understand that if it is what it is, call it what it is and be delivered from what it is. Amen. And if you are who you are, admit you are who you are. Go before God and repent so you can be delivered. If that is your weakness, call your weakness out. Call it out before God. Get a devil a black eye and say, I am no longer hiding this thing, but I'm dealing with it in the name of Jesus. I will no longer be bound because of my issues. If my issue is lying, call it out and start telling the truth. If my issue is whoring, call it out and start going home to your own spouse. If your issue is stealing, call it out and walk in that store and keep your hands in your pocket. If your issue is pornography, call it out and take that mess off your TV channel and throw away them magazines. If your issue, whatever your issue is, call it. Tell somebody, call it out. Call it out. Be set free and stop being bound in the name of Jesus. Samson was bald. Samson was blind. Samson was bound because he slept with the enemy. But there's another thing I see in the text. If I can just talk, I'm talking about Samson. Tell somebody she's talking about Samson. Now, if it fits you too, then get delivered. And if it's not for you, just lift your feet up and just let it roll down your row. But the fourth thing I see if we sleep with the enemy is we become buffoons. Oh, my God. First lady said, no, I ain't say y'all buffoons. I say if you sleep with the enemy, you will become a buffoon. What is a buffoon? I'm glad you asked. A buffoon is someone that acts ridiculous and foolish. Ridiculous and foolish. Let's look at it. It's in the text. Judges, the 16th chapter, verse 25. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry, talking about the Philistines, the people that have locked Samson up, that they called, they said, call for Samson, that he may make us sport. You know, y'all remember back in the day um, how, uh, and I don't know the correct term, the blackface, you know, the actors that used to be blackface, y'all know what I'm talking about? And they, the, the people would call the people from the blackface, and they just come act a monkey. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all act like y'all never heard it. Maybe I'm in the wrong generation. Y'all too young for that. Okay, let me bring it another way. When, it, when Jonathan, when Jonathan was about three or four, we were in a restaurant, going into a restaurant, and we came up against this lady and uh, of, the, of another persuasion. And she said, oh, he's so cute. Hi, you little boy, can you dance for me? I say, no, but he can show talk. Ask him some questions. He's not getting ready to perform for you. Y'all understand? See, that, that's what it means to perform. That's what they had Samson do. Look right there in the text. It said, call him that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison and made, and he made them sport. How did he make them sport? They had Samson just fumbling all around the jail. The man's blind, can't see. I imagine they throwing stuff. I imagine they pushing him down. He's trying to get back up. He's walking this way. He's walking there. Everybody laughing at Samson because he can't get his gate. He can't get his boundaries. He can't see like he used to see. His strength is gone from him, and they're making a mock of him Samson the man that God already spoke into his life and said you shall be the one to help deliver the Israelites how did Samson find himself being a buffoon because he slept with the enemy tell somebody he slept with the enemy there are too many Christian saints that are stumbling there are too many of us that are being buffoons there are too many of us that are falling from grace. There are too many of us that are tripping over the same stuff over and over and over again. And we have become just like Samson. We are making mockery of ourselves. And we have become to be ridiculous and in the eyes of many fools. Tell somebody that's sleeping with the enemy. 
Well, I won't leave y'all there. I won't send you home heavy. Somebody said, thank God. Because you don't have to stay asleep. High five somebody say, I don't have to stay asleep. Instead of sleeping with the enemy, I decree to you today, it's time to wake up. Now, can y'all just celebrate that? Just clap your hands, give a hallelujah. It's time to wake up. So as I close, I want to let you know what happens when we wake up. Because many of us have been in that lethargic state of sleeping with the enemy. But when we wake up, glory to God, tell somebody glory to God. Some changes are happening. Tell somebody, I feel a change coming over me. I may have come in here sleeping with the enemy, but I'm going back home awake. Tell somebody, me too, me too. See, the first thing happens when you wake up is that there's a change in the brain. Tell somebody, change in the brain. What do I mean? I mean that your brain function becomes alert. The waves that were at rest are now notified by the brain that it's time for you to be aroused. See, your thinking now is becoming clearer and you are now responsible. Tell somebody, I feel an arousal going on in me. See, the stuff that I used to take, I'm not taking anymore. See, there's a sign that you need to watch out, devil, because my brain is getting back in order. I am no longer asleep. I'm awake now. I'm aware of my surroundings. I am no longer at a place that I'm just laying here. I can respond to what's going on and I'm coming out swinging. Tell somebody and I'm coming out swinging. See, I'm thinking clearer. I'm processing clearer. I'm aware of the tricks and devices of the enemy. I'm in tune to what God has for me. And I remember now, tell somebody I remember. I remember now the prophecy that God has over my life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. So even though I might have slept with the enemy before, tell somebody I'm awake right now, and my brain is coming back. Tell somebody I got a change in the brain. Now that I'm awake, not only do I have a change in my brain, but I have a change in my breaths. Tell somebody, change in my breaths. See, what I understood is when a person is in a sleeping position, their breaths can start and they can stop. Their breaths can go slow and their breaths can go fast. There's some irregularity in their breathing. Such as is in the natural is also in the spiritual. But when a person wakes up, tell somebody, but when they wake up, the breathing pattern is more stable. Their breaths have rhythm to them. Their oxygen levels are regulated. Their body becomes more normalized. Their energy level is increasing. So they're no longer in a place as they were before. They're ready to come out with some breaths of God. When we wake, you need to understand that God is ready to take control of your breaths. How do I know? Because I remember in Genesis, the second chapter, over there about verse 7, it says, And the Lord formed man in the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Tell somebody, living soul. See, the breath gave life to something that never was. And I decree to you today under the sound of my voice by the power of God that the Lord is breathing a fresh breath on everybody in here. Tell somebody, everybody, 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 everybody. Dream your dreams again and let them live. God said right now for you to allow your family to live. God said right now your finances shall live. God said that your body is here. God said your mind is regulated. God said he will give you peace. God said your direction is coming back. Tell somebody I got my breath. I got my breath. I ain't laying out like here. I'm not comatose and I'm not going out like that. How far somebody say that's good news? When we wake up, there's a third thing that happens.
happens. When we wake up, we're going to have a change in the brain. We're going to have a change in our breath. But then we're going to have a change in the body. Tell somebody a change in my body. What do you mean, McCullough? I'm glad you asked. See, when we are asleep, we experience what's called thermoregulation. That's where the body temperature begins to drop, where we lose some heat in our bodies. But as soon as we wake up, tell somebody wake up, the temperature begins to rise. The temperature begins to go to a normal place. The body heat begins to turn up. The heat begins to allow the flow of the blood to go. The body begins to change and it has a transformation taking place. See, when you were laying in a sleep state, your body was at one place but as soon as you wake up your body begins to do something new tell somebody something new I remember that Christ was marked I remember a change with our father I remember how he was marked and crucified I remember how he was placed on a cross he was buried and dead but I just also remember that that was not the end of the story he went to death hell and the grave but he got up and because God's body got up, guess what? We can get up to. High five somebody and say, get up, get up. You don't have to stay there with the enemy. It's time to get up, get up. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but my body feels the blood, the blood, the blood. See, the blood in my body will cleanse me. So I don't have to stay there with the enemy. The blood in my body will wash me. I don't have to stay there with the enemy. The blood in my body will sanctify me. I don't have to stay there with the enemy. The blood in my body has purified me. I don't have to stay there with the enemy. Tell somebody the blood, the blood. Now, since we are awake, tell somebody I'm awake now. Since we are awake. Y'all sit down, you're making me nervous. Since I'm now awake, instead of planning my next move on a video game, I'm planning the next move for my life. Since I'm now awake, instead of making excuses, I'm ready to make a plan. Since I'm awake, instead of writing a Facebook post, I'm going to write some chapters in my book. Since I'm now awake, instead of getting a picture to put on Instagram, I'm getting a picture for my family. Since I'm now awake, instead of thinking about if loving you is wrong, I'm going to ask God to give me a revelation for a love that's right. Since I am awake, instead of being complacent doing nothing, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom to do something. Since I am awake, I don't care what happens on impact. I'm spending time in prayer with God to build my own empire. We must remember who we are, who we are called to be, and how we are to be a blessing to the kingdom. Now, Samson, brothers and sisters, got off track. Look at somebody and say, and we have to. But at the end of Samson's life, he, he woke up. Tell somebody he woke up. See, Samson woke up. Look at Judges, the 16th chapter. I'm almost through. 16th chapter, verse 22. How be it? The hair on his head began to grow again after he was shaved. And this is what happened. The Philistines didn't notice that Samson was getting his hair back. Samson didn't go around talking about, I'm getting my hair back. Hey, y'all, my hair growing back. Samson didn't say a word. When God is strengthening you, getting ready to take you to your next level, you don't have to go around and brag about what God is doing. You don't have to say a word. Folk will be able to see your strength. You don't have to say, oh, I'm getting ready to do so. Uh-uh, just live it. Just live, tell somebody, just live it. Samson, down in the 16th 
16th chapter, round verses 26 through 30. While he was out there being the buffoon, they were making sport of him. Samson called to a lad, and he said to the lad, help me over to the pillars so I can prop myself up and hold myself up. I believe Samson thought, I have made a fool out of myself long enough. I don't know about y'all, but I'm with Samson. I've made a fool out of some stuff long enough. Tell somebody, me too, me too. Samson stood up, and the Bible says, um, between verses 26 and 30, that he held on to the pillars. And Samson held on to those two pillars in the middle of the house while these Philistines were mocking him and making him look like a buffoon. And Samson pulled those pillars together and everything crumbled. The word of God said that Samson killed more people at his death than he ever did during his life. Tell somebody, Samson took him down. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to take some stuff down in my life. I am tired of the same stuff, the same mistakes, the same errors, the same sins, the same shortcomings, the same messages, the same prayers. Tell somebody I'm tired of them. If we must decree I'm no longer sleeping with the enemy. I've done it before, but I'm doing it no more. Any call that is a distraction from my destiny must go. Any cause that makes me away from who I am called to be must go. Any cause that has a deception like a Delilah spirit must go. Any cause that moves me from my purpose of what God has me to do must go. Tell somebody, must go, must go. Any cause that allows me to become spiritually bound must go. Any cause that's going to take away my spiritual eyesight must go. Any cause that's going to try to keep me bound and not free to do the things of God must go. Any cause that makes me look like a buffoon foolish and ridiculous must go. Tell somebody it must go. It must go. I don't know about you, but no more sleeping with the enemy. No more coming up short. No more allowing people to make a fool out of me. No more allowing things to come in my life that should not. No more because I'm awake and I shall not Sleeping with the enemy. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704 704- 865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.